Hey now, it's Brace for Impact, and I'm your host, Mike Gilbert, and I'm joined as always by JD by God Oliva. How you doing, JD? I'm okay. I'm I'm okay. You're okay. You're hanging in there. You're doing good. Hanging in there. We uh you know, we had the big state tournament last weekend, had that epic win in the semis and got to the finals and we took on the Chicago sports factory basically the school basically only exists for sports and we took them to the last match and we faltered so super 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 disappointing but still proud of the kids and all the work they put in so yeah you know, finished the year ranked 22nd in the country really damn. can't complain about anything no man that's pretty damn good yeah we just got so fucking close <laughs> so close yeah. So, yeah but hey man i mean you took on a powerhouse man you took them right up to the very end so that's pretty cool yeah yeah it was it was uh it was nuts we split seven and seven matches they just you know they uh they came down to like one match you know if we would won one match we'd have gotten it and we had our opportunities so yeah it was fun i can't i got like i said i don't regret anything it's just uh yeah you come close and you don't make it so but i'm okay yeah and if uh, you're listening to this you can uh you can hear that the audio is probably a little bit better i'm not talking into my cell phone uh, sitting in the front seat of my truck, uh, out in uh, uh, out in a not a trailer park but a campground. So that's much better. I'm at home, man. This feels great. You remember about five years ago when every when every wrestling podcast is doing interviews with people over cell phones? Oh, that's what it kind of sounded like. This and every time I talked to somebody, <laughs> somebody was in the, uh, somebody was talking on their cell phone in their car. Yeah, dude. So my my first ever podcast, right? So I had. I had a podcast in 2017 called the podcast express, right? Um, kind of a, a, a yeah, but kind of a playoff of the midnight express and the rock and roll express. We even had mm-hmm. our logo was the rock and roll express logo, but it said the podcast express on it. It was, it was a pretty cool Thanks. logo. Um, and so I had this idea and then I was like, well, what, what's my podcast going to be like? How do I get attention? I was like, well, screw it. I need to interview somebody. And I was listening to uh, the Bruce Pritchard show with Conrad Thompson a lot. That was like the early days of that show. And it was like super popular. And I didn't even have a podcast yet. So, and I didn't know how to do a podcast, but I was like, I'm just going to do one. So I, I message, I DM Conrad Thompson. I was like, hey, man, I, I was like, hey, man, I have this podcast. I didn't have a podcast. I was like, I have this podcast. Uh, would you would you mind coming on and let me interview you? And he was like, sure, no problem. I was like, I dumbfounded because he had, you know, over a <laughs> hundred thousand uh, um, followers at that point. Right. And pretty popular podcast. And so I was like, okay, now I have to figure out how to do a podcast. So I start getting all this stuff together. I, I have a microphone, I have uh, some other stuff, but I can't figure out how to work it. Um, and <clears throat> so, and then, <clears throat> so finally I get my microphone to work. I'll be like, I could talk into the microphone, but now how do I get my, how do I record him? Because back in the day you couldn't record Skype. And Zoom just didn't exist until the pandemic, as far as I know. So you couldn't just record a Skype call. So I didn't know how to do any of that. So what I did was, is he just called my cell phone and I put him on speakerphone and I held it next to my microphone and I did the podcast like that. Sounded horrendous, bro. Just terrible, dude. I had no clue what I was doing. Eventually I I got a, um, like one of those sound mixers and then I was able to hook my phone into the sound mixer and that's how I interviewed people. So I actually interviewed a few wrestlers that way that was b- before zoom, obviously. So yeah, I know all about having terrible sounding podcasts. That is one hell of a story. I, I like it. You could have been an ad free shows guy. Uh, yeah. Uh, except for, uh, you know, I have found out through a mutual friend of ours, those guys are scumbags. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea, <laughs> but, I uh, uh, and you make a lot of money though. Yeah. Oh, I'm dude. I, I am like, I, I always tell people that are like, uh, you know, what do you think about WWE working with Saudi? I'm like, I get money from the U S federal government. I have no morals. You know, <laughs> I was like, clearly I'll take money from anybody. So if Conrad Thompson would have given me a lot of money, I'd have been happy to take it, but uh, it didn't work out that way. So I pitched Con- when the, the first star cast, I DM Conrad Thompson, because was me in Chicago and I couldn't, I didn't have tickets. And I'm like, maybe I can scam someone into letting me film for them. So <laughs> yeah. I DM Conrad Thompson and I said, Hey, what about video? What about video star cast? He's like, I'm listening. So I made a pitch to him. I never heard anything back. And six weeks later, they had like fight TV came through with, they were going to do everything. And I'm like, right. That son of a bitch. I, I mean, like it made much more sense to go with fight TV than my dumbass. But I mean, like, yeah, I get it. 
yeah he he might have actually used some of your uh, ideas um, oh yes yeah. because they were all there i mean yeah. like it's like this <laughs> you, when you pitch somebody you know you yeah you, you're giving them ideas uh yeah that's that's really funny so i went to uh i almost i was uh when jim crockett died a year ago today actually oh wow um, i was writing this article coincidentally i was writing this article about um about him and i, I remember that they did this extensive interview with him and like you know what i would like to watch that i would really like to see this great interview with jim crockett the last interview so i went on their site and i was going to subscribe for like one month just to, to watch this thirty dollars <laughs> yes thirty dollars a month and they have people paying that and if you're listening to the show and you subscribe to the ad free shows and you're good with paying thirty dollars a month god bless you but i i cannot in good conscience justify that do you, you want to watch it though right yeah i did want to watch it well i wouldn't okay. listen to the damn thing but they only had it on video okay i got you i'll i'll also no I'm I'll, cheap ass, so oh yeah I'll, I'll send it to you tonight so oh i needed it a year ago man but i appreciate that <laughs> yeah I, yeah I'll listen, to, I'll listen to it yeah but i <laughs> i i have again i i also have no scruples so right yes. Uh, but hey, uh, so this is an impact podcast, and I want to welcome the the uh, viewers of the Impact Lounge YouTube. We're back on there this week. Um, I talked to BQ a couple of weeks ago, and he was like, "Hey, why don't you guys, you know, come on again?" The the last show was pretty successful, so Thanks, um, BQ. yeah. So I think we we might uh, you know we might try to do something every now and then, uh, you know, for uh, like pay per view go homes or something like that. So we're working it all out, man. It's just kind of free flowing here with uh, with BQ. But Mike, it's such a slow news week. Whatever will we talk about? I I know. Well, uh, well, when we get to the Patreon, we got tons of news to talk about. Uh, so that that's that's going to be wild uh, when we get to that. I'm sure both of us have pretty strong feelings about a lot of the news of the Ring of Honor. The two yeah. of us get out of here. <laughs> yeah, about Ring of Honor and a lot of other things that involving Impact. Um, but to, let's get into tonight's show, man. Uh, this is the Sacrifice Go Home Show. Um, sacrifices this Saturday, two weeks after no surrender. And they kind of just threw this pay-per-view together, uh, or I guess, you know, it's on the app. So I guess WWE would call it a premium live event, but, uh, um, they, they just kind of threw it together. It's, it's a nice card. There's some head scratching matchups. Um, but then there's some other matches that I'm like, just super excited about. And so, um, it felt like this week was just kind of a bridge to get to that. And then once sacrifice, is over then they will start getting their storylines together for the next big pay-per-view which is rebellion in april two takes two hot takes for you one i don't hate the term premium live event me either i like it yeah. works it, it's what it is i mean pay-per-view doesn't really work anymore because you're not paying per the view right, right. We're, we're feeding into unless you're doing like AEW, like when i watched revolution this weekend like well that's a paper yeah like this stuff it makes it makes sense to calling it such second if this is a half-ass impact effort to put a card together at the last minute it's a pretty damn good effort like <laughs> yeah, yeah done a really good job actually yeah i'm 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 interested yeah and you know navigating uh navigating covid which they they were hit hard before these tapings and so they uh the no no surrender america as, as was America. And I'm going to get into some of that a little bit later with uh, when it comes to one of the matches, because I noticed something and I think that it hmm. might be COVID related and I'll, hmm. I'll relate to it. But um, so tonight, I think that tonight's episode was kind of a tale of, of two shows. I thought it was bookended really well. Mm -hmm. I thought it opened up really well with Eddie Edwards and Steve Macklin. I thought it closed Good. very well. I thought uh, with the Bullet Club versus Violent by Design and Tonga, Tama Tonga Tonga Loa, the G.O.D., uh, with the big brawl, I'm always a big fan of a, close, a show closing brawl. Um, and then there was some stuff in the middle that was just kind of like, ah, yeah, you know, he, head scratch. I see where they're going, but it just, the angles just didn't hit for me. Um, so I, I'm not saying that this was a thumbs down episode. I still enjoyed it. I, th I thought it was a fun episode to watch, but probably of the year, I'd, I'd put it on the bottom for me. I would agree. Like it was, I think this is the least interesting episode of Impact I've watched in a while. But it wasn't like bad. Like I think the standard of the show has just really picked up over the last uh, three, four months, right? Um, two, three months maybe. Like uh, it was fine. Where it was good, it was good. Where it was bad, it was puzzling. So yes, yes. Um, so we'll go ahead and get into the show. Um, so BTI, Brian Myers defeated Crazy Steve. And that was talking BTI. Cool. Return next week for more talking BTI. 
Um, so the, the opening video recapped Eddie Edwards' explanation for Turning Point on Impact Wrestling and aligning himself with, uh, or for Turning Point, I'm sorry, for turning on Impact and aligning himself with Honor No More. Uh, along with it came a promo from Macklin, who takes on Eddie Edwards. Uh, we, that's the first match. Uh, Steve Macklin defeats Eddie Edwards uh, via disqualification. Uh, I thought this was a pretty good match up until the up until the end. There, um, we'll we'll go we'll go to the end now. In control, Eddie Edwards worked over Macklin with constant chops, but all he achieved was to wake up Macklin, who came back at Edwards with chops of his own. Both men continued uh, with back and forth strikes until Macklin had a backbreaker, a Larry, and an Olympic slam, which I thought was kind of a cool spot. Uh, Macklin tried to hit the the third tope. But Edwards stopped him. Eddie ended up distracting himself with the fans and allowing Macklin to hit the crosshair spear. So they were on the ropes. Eddie Edwards is down, upside down, and then uh, Macklin ends up hitting the crosshairs cool. on him. Which that's my that's one of my favorite spots that he cool. does. Very cool. Um, uh, suddenly, Edward. So uh, Eddie goes out to the ring or goes outside of the ring. Um, Macklin's trying to come after him. Edwards got a kendo stick and and smacked the hell out of him over the head for the DQ. And then he continued the attack after the bell until Team Impact. Ran out for the save. Um, thoughts on this match? It was fun. I, yeah. um, I wish this was a pay-per-view match. I hope we see it again someday. I think they had really good chemistry. Um, the tope is like outside the super kick, the most spammed move in pro wrestling. And I've seen a bazillion of them, but Macklin's looks really good. Yeah. He, like, his a big body moving really well. His reminds me of Darby Allen's. Yeah. Um, and like but beefier, yeah. but a beefier version of like a more dangerous Darby Allen spear, I would say. Mm-hmm. Darby's yeah. is like wild, and and they they figured out how to shoot it really well in AEW. Where mm-hmm. you, sometimes they don't even get him in in the shot, and it's just his body just it's like a Roadrunner cartoon. Like, yeah. but this was uh this was different. I I quite enjoyed what we had. Um, I yeah I, I didn't like the end, but again, this is storytelling stuff, and it, it kind of is what it is, and. You know, I don't think it's the right time for either guy to really take a loss. But you know, no. we have a small roster, so you gotta you gotta put matches on. Yeah, I, I you know, I'm not not a big fan of, of uh, the DQ here. I I'm I'm not. I don't hate it at all. All right, because I, I get it. it. Yeah. We're we're making Eddie a heel, mm-hmm. so he did a heel move. I would have mm-hmm. liked to see him cheat to win, um, because if he's gonna be the guy, he's the top heel in the company. The the wins are important. So now I he's agree. just he's just losing. Macklin, if 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 Eddie cheats and beats him or like if he hits the kendo, hits him with a kendo stick, distracts the ref, you know, honor no more comes down, you know, the, what, what are those guys, David and Bennett, they hit their finisher on him, And then Eddie comes in to get the victory. I think that's cool. Right. That, that's, yeah. that seems like appropriate with, with that. But so my, this is like a minor nitpick, by the way, this is not like me complaining, but that that's kind of what I would done. By the same token, if Eddie's a heel now, him having a I don't give a shit attitude about getting disqualified isn't bad either. It no. does change the character up a little bit, and makes him a little more unpredictable. But um, I don't know. I just I don't know. Like WWE ruined disqualifications for everybody. So yeah, I just don't like them. I know you're not supposed to like them. So I get what they're going for. It, it was fine in the whole. I'm looking forward to this being a match again. This was really- oh, is Steve Macklin? Like for as much crap as the performance center takes for developing talent, right? Because especially male talent, like there's a long list of eh, talent that's come out of there. Macklin's really good. And I think that if a lot of these guys have a chance to showcase what they can really do outside of a very um, encumbering WWE system, I think people would be surprised. Yeah, man. I I'm very surprised at how great Macklin has been. Um, Yeah. Um, so Maria cut a promo telling team impact that they were all fools for being brainwashed into thinking that honor and impact mattered. Uh, so these, <laughs> this, this was taped before the announcement. It's like, uh, <laughs> didn't age very well. No. <laughs> she said that Edwards turning on them, uh, made them question, uh, Heath and Vincent talk trash to each other. Uh, and they ended up uh, challenging each other to a match. I, uh, I thought I, I don't know what it is about Vincent. I really like him. Love I him. just been, I just I've been it. a big Vin. I'll, I'll have more to say about this later. I, yeah. I've, um, during the pandemic era of Ring of Honor, which was a really hard watch after right. the Pure Tournament, Vincent was a pleasure to watch. He's he's got he's a personality guy. He's um I've always compared him a little bit to Bray Wyatt, but I mean yeah. I think he's a little bit more uh crazy. Whereas Bray Bray Wyatt was very theatrical mm-hmm. in his performance. Like, like Vincent always came off like he's 
vocal. You know, he's a little, little goofy. Yeah. So I, I like Vincent. I like this. I, one critique I have about this. Why are we not letting Taven cut promos anymore? I, you know what? He, we didn't hear it all from him tonight. So we got, we got to rectify that situation. I so, concur. and I, you know, they, they got a lot of new people and uh, they're, you know, everybody, they want to get more people, more chances to talk. The, the good problem to have mm-hmm. is that they have a, a lot more people that can cut better promos now that they brought these ring of honor guys in. Very um, true. Maria, and, Maria overrated promo though. Yeah. Yeah. O- overrated, but they keep her stuff short. So, um, but she's kind of like, you know, the de facto, I don't want to say voice of it because they all kind of have their own voice, but mm-hmm. she, she does some of the talking for them. I think I would prefer, you know, Taven um, doing some more of the talking, but um, you know, th- th- this is fine, but you and I are both Taven guys. Now we're on the, we're on team Taven. Now we are team Taven. This is a pro Taven podcast. And I do think this is a show that we started to see the cracks and I don't know more already starting to splinter off. Right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're going to get to that. <laughs> so mm-hmm. uh, Heath uh, with team impact defeated Vincent with uh, honor no more. Um, the, you know, this match was okay. So this is where I was, um, I was talking about maybe COVID reared its ugly head because last week Heath revealed that he was out for COVID protocols. I, I, so I don't know that he actually had it or if he was just a close contact for somebody and that's why he had missed the previous tapings, but he was sucking wind about a minute into that match. And I was like, I was like, brother, I know exactly what that look is. Like he was he, he looked like his breathing was just completely restricted. Like it, whenever I had those breathing issues, it felt like somebody was sitting on top of my chest and I, uh, it would, it would hurt to take deep breaths. I never, when I caught the thing, I never had the breathing issues. And I had that stupid thing on my finger monitoring my oxygen because my wife got me all paranoid about it. So I just had some fatigue. I got so lucky with it, Yeah. but I convinced having watched this match that you can, We'll never know for sure, mm-hmm. but yeah, he, he said, he said that he was out due to COVID protocols. That, those are his words. Mm-hmm. Um, that, and then watching that match, it leads me to believe that he probably had he it. Was, he was yeah. the protocol <laughs> because so. not only, not only me, like I talked to my doctor and he was like, so many people are saying the same things as you were like, where you feel fine. And then all of a sudden you do something like you go up the stairs or you do something that exerts yourself. And next thing you know, you got to sit down because you can't breathe. All right? And that was me. That was me for a couple of weeks. After. Like I like I was I didn't have, you know, I wasn't having the chills and all that stuff. But this the breathing, it lingered on for a couple of weeks, man. And it sucked. Um, yeah, I had I had the chills. I had the fever. Yeah. I had the fatigue, but not like breathing fatigue. Like, holy shit, I got hit by a bus fatigue. Right. Like right. this virus that I, I wouldn't wish that virus on my worst enemy. No. No, I, I, so I had the chills and the stuff for the first couple of days and then I was fine, but the breathing stuff lingered for a while. So, um, so, but, so we're sorry, supposed to believe Heath's the top contender for this title. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah. Woof. Yeah. He, he, he didn't look good in this match. I I'm going to, I, I don't want to, you know, maybe, maybe he deserves a mulligan because of the virus, yeah, okay. but uh, he, it, it was not, a, this match was not good. I don't, I wouldn't say it's too bad. I, I did like what Vincent did in the match, but uh, me too. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I think Vincent, a ring of honor guy true through and through uh, kind of carried old Heath to a decent performance. Yeah. And I hope he's feeling better now, but at the same time, it's also Heath. Yeah. So we're not I, talking about a, an epic worker here. No, no, not at all. But yeah. Anyway, uh, after the match, both parties brawled until Moose came out and took out Taven by accident as he was trying to take out Heath, who instead hit the wake up call on Moose for and then uh, he actually covered him for a pin and uh, Rich Swan came in and counted the three. So you had like the uh, what are they the ceremonial or symbolic pin there for uh, for all Heath. Um, then we go to the impact plus flashback moment of the week team 3D versus beer money incorporated versus the Motor City Machine Guns. Um, so there you go. I fast forwarded through that. Sorry. Oh, I watched it because I oh, love you did? machine. I love <laughs> yeah. the Motor City Machine Guns. And Dude, I always me too. That. Me too. I, I think we're going to talk about them uh, later on on Patreon. I got. I, assume, I, I, I got a theory because Frankie's got. Or because, yeah, because uh, Kazarian's coming. Not Kazarian. I'm sorry. Alex because, Shelley. Uh, Alex Shelley. Like his freaking Twitter I, name always throws me off. I keep thinking it says Frank. Like right. Yeah. Alex yeah. Shelley's coming back. Yeah, Alex Shelley's coming back at sacrifice to take on his former protege, uh, Jay White. Uh, I think it was that, and also it was um, it was a sacrifice show. So they, you know, they're gearing up for sacrifice, so they're showing old sacrifice matches. 
So um, Masha, Masha Slamovich is next. Uh, she defeated, uh, I guess she's from Booker T's school, the reality of wrestling school, Rochelle Rose. Uh, quick squash for Slamovich. Um, for those that don't know, this match was taped before the whole Russia stuff happened. And so if you see, you know, she's got the Russia colors and keeping the name. I'm look, I, I don't think that impact should really overdo it here with uh, with changing things up. I do think that going forward at the next tapings, they should probably remove the flag and all that stuff from her gear, though. Um, as the kids say, it hits different. Yeah. If all I could think is watch the match, I, she hits that snow plow, and this is the first shot that goes through my head. I'm like, if this was 30 years ago, they would have called that the Ukrainian like uh, power plant or something like oh, that. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. If it's something completely trashy and tasteless, yeah. and there's a middle, like you said, there's a middle ground where you don't have to strip everything away from Masha, but. Right. Let's not go the other way either. No, let's you know? let's stay as far away from that. It's a different day and age, but you're 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 right. And not not only would uh would that be what it called, like she would have had an American pretending to be a, a Russian by her side doing the worst Russian accent uh, humanly possible and saying all the most horrible things. So a crusher Khrushchev of her own. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like no, none of those damn Russians in in uh, mid Atlantic were actually Russian because you had a single one. No, because um, Ivan Koloff was from Toronto, right? Wasn't he? Quebec, I believe. Quebec, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and Nikita old, Koloff was Nikita from, Koloff from Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah, he went to high school with Rick Rude and those guys. <laughs> yeah, and so did Darso. Darso. So did Darso, a, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, but it's really cold in Minnesota, and they probably played hockey, so they have some Russian in them, maybe. Possibly. They, yeah. they knew the, they knew the, uh, the environment. So. Yeah. But, so, I, I know that I saw there was a, somebody on one of the Impact fan pages that I'm a part of on Facebook. I think it was Impact Fan Nation. And they said, hey, you know, Masha's career is going to – get killed before it even gets started and i'm like yes. pump the brakes on that stuff she's a wonderful talent she's young um she can't control what's going on in the world she has russian heritage and that's been a part of her character and it's been working for a long time i don't think you change anything else other than taking out the russian flag and some of the russian rhetoric off maybe, to the side maybe we just call her masha for a yeah. little bit I think that we should just call her Masha anyway. I've yeah, because Slamovich is a stupid name. Let's be real. I'll <laughs> yeah. say it. It's just yeah. stupid. It's so indie. Yeah. It's so indie. Slamovich. It's really bad. But right. Yeah. And and I'm like, I'm never one of those guys whenever like if somebody builds up a name on the independence, for the most part, I'm like, they should keep their name. Yeah, nine times right? out of ten. Nine times out of ten. Masha Slamovich and Jake something should figure something else out. <laughs> I think so. My, but that's just my opinion. It just it screams independent. And so, um, but uh, yeah, she, she got the quicks uh, squash there. So she looks great as always. She's a fantastic mm -hmm. wrestler uh, backstage. Uh, Gorillas of destiny cut a great promo about not being dead weight. Like uh, Jay white had said they were, uh, but they were actual champions and draw seven time. IWGP heavyweight tag team champions. Tama Tonga addressed Jay White, telling him that he had it, that had it been uh, Tama who brought in White to begin with, um, or telling him that it had been Tama who brought up White to begin with, and that it was this was personal. He said that White was threatened by him. And then all of a sudden, Violent by Design approached them, tried to start a business arrangement. Uh, EA, EY wanted a shot at the Good Brothers while well, GOD wanted. Um, wanted a shot at the good brothers tag team titles and god wanted a shot at the good brothers and they wanted to beat up on jay white so uh they accepted so they're going to be partners later in the evening i suppose in a company where sammy callahan calls himself a draw anybody can be a draw everybody's <laughs> yeah let's be real i like god but they didn't draw a diamond like they're not nobody bought a ticket to see god <laughs> no. like in japan but i mean come on no they, but they did buy a ticket to see the bullet club and they Bullet were big Club. parts of that. Yeah. Bullet Club. Yes. Yeah. And they were they were a big part of the Bullet Club. They were a big part so. of the Bullet Club. Not as big as Kenny Omega. But no. A big part of Bullet Club. Not, not as big as AJ Styles or not as big as AJ Styles. Uh, Prince David and all those guys. So yeah. But yeah, totally get it. And then this was weird. I don't know. I think I might be done with this. I don't know. I'm interested to hear what you have to say. Ace Austin approached Mike Bailey about the win last week. And once mm -hmm. again, tried to get him to join up and go for the gold. Bailey agreed that maybe he and Austin had a better shot than Austin and Fulton ever did. Fulton wasn't happy about that comment. Thoughts? So I, I messaged you in the middle when I was watching this sequence <laughs> yeah. because I couldn't. Because again, uh, we saw off with Bailey doing some like pirouette stretches, basically. 
on risers. Why are there's risers just in the middle of the scene? I have no idea. And I texted you three of the worst haircuts in Impact Wrestling. Yeah. Speedball, Mike Bailey, Ace Austin, Madman Fulton. Just terrible hair all around. I am so bored with this. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. so just... bored. I'm looking at the background. I'm looking at haircuts. Like, I, I like Ace Austin. He's an awful actor. Like, yeah, I have zero interest in any of this at this point. They're yeah. in the ring. Great. I love watching them wrestle. Oh, yeah. But the, the, um, their thespian work not not on board with not not working out here and mike bailey is um i would say next to cardona like the hottest guy on the independence right now dude he is everywhere and his matches are getting like five star reviews from uh, all over the place man and the highlights that you see on twitter of this guy are incredible good um, athlete, man. Really great, good athlete. yeah fantastic athlete i'm learning so much about this guy um i i think that he should be the guy to have the x division title and he should be taking it to all these independents that he's working um he's actually gonna take on jay white uh, new japan during WrestleCon weekend so um that should be awesome man so i've cut i like this by the way um Here's what I'm thinking. In this day and age where you're allowed to work for a major company, but then you can go still go all over, make money and get better. Why don't we see that from more people? I know the answer, but I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm asking you rhetorical questions. Why don't more people do this? Yeah, um, I, I think a lot of people balked at that. I know that was um, so when Killer Cross worked in Impact and, and he might just be a bad example because he's just a dipshit. But um, yeah, but when he was an impact and I think uh, I don't know how much he was making, but it, you know, it was probably 20, 30,000 a year. And what, what they told him and he wanted a lot more money. And what they told him was, look, when you're starting out and you're new, you know, we're going to put you on TV, but then you got to go out and take all the independent dates and fill up your calendar. Cause if, with impact, you're only working once a month. Mm -hmm. So it's only like two to four days a month. And that's, that's not that many dates. So there, you have to fill up your calendar and go out there and get your name out there and spread it all over. You have to hustle. And he didn't want to do that. There's a lot of people are just like that. They just, they want to work for this one company and they want to get, they want to get their paycheck every week and they don't want to get out there and hustle. Uh, but Lazy. then you got late and then you got guys like Speedball Bailey and, you know, and, and to his credit, Ace Austin is another one of those guys. Ace Austin is another he's, one. I saw him at the AAW show here in Chicago. Like, yeah. yeah, these guys, these guys that work are the ones who are actually getting better. Like yeah. we see this a lot in AEW too, where these people, they sign on and then you just don't see them anymore. And it's like, how do you expect to be good? And then I hear people complain about why so-and-so isn't booked and why so-and-so isn't booked. And I'm like, well, they could take bookings every weekend if they wanted mm. to. Yeah. But they just, I mean, if you're complacent, which that's what it is, right? Neither company asks a lot from anybody, right? Warrior Wrestling brings in everybody. Yeah. Right? Defy brings in everybody. Like. Why aren't you doing more, man? And and Killer Cross is uh, <laughs> well. We see how that worked out for him. Yeah, he's uh, he's controlling his narrative out there, right? As as we speak, <laughs> maybe maybe uh, maybe I'll paint a rant in his face. I don't know. So, <laughs> what? Wow, we need to we need to discuss that at some point. So yeah. look, we we talked about this. we're gonna cover this, right? Because like I I this, think we that, have to. I think that like you know for fight game media. Our show has pretty much lowered the bar for content, so it has to be us. Yes, like, we're like we're like the redheaded stepchildren we of are. fight game. We're, we're sure. like the <laughs> the bar is so low, you like stumble over it as you're walking in. Like you got like the boom and like pound for yeah. pound to the guy way up high, and then you got us, you know, scraping the bottom of the barrel. We'll do the CYN. Yeah, I I covered IPWF, the horrendous impact show from December. Um, I I, I think I'm the only one and you are with me we're I the only on the ones show. Yeah. yes we're, we're the only ones qualified to do that so i i think that it has to be us qualified or punished <laughs> or the other. Yeah. yeah we clearly have no dignity we will do anything for money i will um, <laughs> i will watch austin aries cutting stupid victim promos <laughs> yeah. about how do two guys control their own narrative in this by the way like is that like the focus is i'm controlling my narrative you're controlling your narrative can the narratives coexist? Like, right. <laughs> I got to see, I got to see how this whole thing works out and how God awful terrible it's going to be. It's not going to be good. <laughs> it's going to be terrible. And I can't wait. Uh, remember what, remember we kept asking when uh, Adam share was going to come into impact and I kept uh, saying, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And yeah. here we, here we are. They started their own company, bro. I was on the train 
you know, and he used to he used to run around the ring and they would make train noises, right? Choo-choo, yeah, you would yeah, yeah. sounds. Dude, I was for him coming to impact because I, I liked him in WWE. Like he didn't do much, but what he did, I thought he was intense and had and he was you know fun to watch. And I was like, and I thought he was a big star that him him coming to impact would be a big deal for impact. I am so glad that deal fell through. And you were right. I was wrong. You're handsome. I'm not attractive. You're smart. I'm stupid. Yeah, that whole thing. I'll take uh, it. Ha- Happy Gilmore, everybody. Go watch it. Yes, but uh, watch that movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm so glad they they literally dodged a bullet on that, dude. I so he he was he was spending. I think it was yesterday, the day before, just hurling insults at people. Dude, like, you own social media. Oh my I god! Forgot to give you credit for this. I saw yeah. Warren Hayes praising mike i'm like that's my boy look at that <laughs> dude I got, a moment. I got retweets from almost every major like wrestling <laughs> media fight uh, out there um but yeah he was like hurling insults at people and then i just responded and i was like hey man how's that mental health app going and he goes oh fine thank you and then i, I was just like there's nothing more to say so i just screenshotted it i said nothing i just posted the picture and next thing you know it just gets picked up everywhere <laughs> <laughs> because it was so perfect and that meathead went right over his head it yeah was just right over his meat head is what i should have said like god damn was that fantastic yeah yes. yeah because i'm like here you are a mental health advocate and you're just sitting there hurling insults at people that could probably use some help right if they're getting into arguments on twitter they're clearly not there right and so and you're just hurling is charged yes right yeah and you're and you're hurling insults at these people and then uh and it doesn't seem like that app is working out for you so much there mr (laughs) sure um and uh, i don't think that you're a good advocate for that business you don't seem to be qualified that's okay ec3's making nazi jokes on uh, this whole thing is going to be like impact will stay around forever man because like even at its even at its worst, it will never be this. <laughs> yeah. Right? Right. And we need to watch this and go, oh, maybe things aren't so bad sometimes. You know? <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's get back to the show. Cassie Lee of The Inspiration defeated Madison Rain with The Influence. I'm going to say something that might be kind of a hot take. take. Um, uh, I, I thought Cassie Lee looked good here. Um, yes. Like her ring work, uh, her ring looked, work. looked great. Um, I thought she looked better than Madison Rain. Uh, I have not been impressed with Madison Rain for a long time. I thought that she looked better than Chelsea Green later in the show. Ooh. And I, I'm not saying this was, you know, a, a great match. This was all building towards the angle with Caleb to the outside. But I, 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 I enjoyed this. I thought this was fine. Yes, this was not uh, Minami Toyota Naja Kong. No one's claiming that it was. I thought, excuse me, I thought she looked, I thought she looked good. Um, like competent. Mm-hmm. Like more than actually, that's not even fair. More than confident. Like I, I was, I was, not, I was pleasantly entertained. And like you know, um, I actually think they've been better here than they were in WWE, like considerably. Yep, my, from the beginning. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think they've been fine. The the um, this is the worst distraction finish I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, it, it's so campy. It's like it's so it is stupid. campy, and it works. Yeah. It works for them, so I'll allow it. But we got to shit it out the pot with Caleb, man. <laughs> yeah, well, he's got to he's got to get rid of these stupid influence ladies and join the right. inspiration. Right. I mean, that's the only way we can go with it. And like, he set her down. Ever he set Billy down. What's her name now? Uh, um, not Je- K, with Jesse. There you go. Jesse. Jesse K. He the K. He sets her down ever so gently, and everyone's like staring at him, slack jawed. And I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Like he didn't do anything controversial like no. what should he have done like a, a blue thunder bomb like i don't know i don't well, know <laughs> it, well it, normally he would because he you know would get involved in the matches and help cheat right and so he would like he probably would have slammed normally in that but situation she wasn't in the match it was the no, that, one that is true yeah <laughs> so that's what i'm saying it's like why do you care if he slams the other one shouldn't she be like yeah go why, why are you paying attention? Like distraction finishes are dumb to begin with, but this one was like really dumb. <laughs> yeah. Well, the whole, the whole story is really like, dumb. Is really I'm dumb. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just ready for it to be over. I can't, I'm glad this match is Bro, finally happening. They have stretched this out for so long. Yeah. It's, like, it's we're been... not exactly talking to free birds and the Von Eriks here, man. No, this thing has just gone on and on. And, like, <laughs> 
can't wait for it to be over. Yeah, the same here. Um, next, we got Tasha Steeles uh, defeated Chelsea Green in a knockouts championship number one contender match. Uh, basically, um, Chelsea had the upper hand, and then Savannah Evans uh, beat her up, and Tasha won. There you go. That was the match. Um, not a good match. Chelsea Green did not look good. Very clunky. Very clunky. She looks like between between moves, she always looks so lost and like robotic and like uncomfortable. Like the fact that she got she gets so many bookings. Like I said, I was talking about people being lazy. Chelsea Green is not lazy. No. I'll say that. She gets booked everywhere. She's got a great work ethic. She really does. Uh I just don't think she's very good. Yeah. I just don't think she ever put it together in the ring. Or maybe it's just maybe she's just a terrible she's baby better. face. She I think she's a terrible she's... baby face. I will give you that. And I guess this we're just gonna keep on stringing along this eventual heel turn, whatever it'll happen eventually. Yeah. Um that being said, I think Tasha's one of the more improved players over the last year. I, I hope she wins on Saturday. Me too. I really like her. I think she'd be a great champion. I think she's gotten a lot better since yep. this uh, since the tag team broke up. I'm actually I, I dig it. I think you know she got the better end of that one because Kira Hogan tried her best to get signed with AEW. I think she's worked some dark matches, but I haven't seen much of her. She's been doing NWA too. I believe Kira's on a tier zero at AEW, which means, um, you know, we'll get we'll kick you some money and do yeah. you do a bunch of dark stuff. Ha- have uh, your have your phone handy. Uh, and yeah, she's on can... the same, but she's on the same tier as like a Sky Blue. Right. You know, it's like their developmental deal. So it's not like maybe she'll be in the ring of honor. Who knows? <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> yeah, to be continued. Um, security uh, backstage asked Matt Cardona, uh, who was walking into the building, if he had a backstage pass while he's carrying the digital media world championship, which Cardona then chastised them. Uh, Cardona tried to show off his win last week. So he had his phone. He was trying to show a video of him beating Grace. Uh, but nobody cared. He ends up talking to this old dude who might have been Ralphus's grandpa. I don't know who he was, but uh, and his name was on his shirt. It looked like he was like a massage guy is what it said. But uh, he said he's going to take the title and defend it somewhere else. So he's going he's gonna to be out for a little bit. Put some respect on the name of the NWA <laughs> world champion, my yeah. friend. The belt held by Lou Thez and Harley Race. Right. Flair. <laughs> yeah. Matt Cardo. You know, I say this and, not not in a mocking fashion whatsoever because he's the most important name on the independent scene right now. And I'm not is. over-exaggerating. Like, he's not. No. He's great. Yeah. He's, he, honest to God, man, he's a, he's become a highlight of the show. And I, I think they should put the world title on him. I, I, w- I wouldn't be mad at that at all. Um, I, I, he's more yeah. to me, to me, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this to me. He's far more interesting than moose uh, moose versus Heath. Absolutely. Um, if they get Josh back different story, because I think that story is, uh, it's, I that, 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 that that's, a, that's a different story, but I, I think, I think l- later this year, um, if they transition over to Josh, I, and somehow it ends up on Cardona. I, I think that you could do a Cardona run eventually. Not a lot of Josh talk tonight. No, they they didn't really bring him up. They talked about him a lot last week, but this mm-hmm. week uh, you didn't really hear him uh, hear about him. So we'll 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 see how all that plays out. But it looks like a Cardona. He's actually not even on the posters for Sacrifice. Um, he's booked somewhere else. So he's going to miss this. Uh, he's going to miss Sacrifice in the and the taping after that. But I think he's going to be back in Philly in a how couple many weeks. Bookings? Do you think he has for WrestleMania weekend? Oh, dude, he's got to be hitting every show. I he's wouldn't surprise. Like when we're in Pentagon and Phoenix, work like twenty shows. WrestleMania yeah. weekend. Oh That's yeah, it's gonna be him. He's yeah. gonna be everywhere. Everywhere. And good for him, man. He deserves yeah. it. Yeah, great. He had uh, outside the two big promotions. I don't think anybody had a better year than Matt Cardona. No, I really nope. don't. No, nope. nope. He's great. Uh, Jonah defeated Johnny Swinger. Um, so Swinger challenged Jonah to a rematch after Jonah already destroyed Swinger uh, a few weeks ago. Um, Jonah is getting ready to take on uh, PCO at sacrifice. So this was, uh, <laughs> it was a squash swinger opened the match by raking his eyes. And I started laughing so hard. Uh, and then he tried to get him in a Russian leg sweep for some reason. And then Jonah blocked it, uh, hit the senton, hit the tsunami, got the win. And as he's going for a second tsunami after the, uh, after the match was over, the honor no more theme song hits and out comes PCO in total baby face mode comes out. They fight. Um, and then Jonah hits uh, a tsunami on PCO, who then, after being down for a few seconds, no sells it, and Jonah gets scared and runs away. 
PCO what? is already a baby face. What is this? <laughs> like, I so, love the idea of the two of them wrestling each other. It's yeah. going to be ugly, beefy, <laughs> you know, slam. PCO is going to do some stupid bumps and Jonah will slam him off something. It's going to be, but Jonah's a heel. Yeah. This is our biggest heel faction. What are we I, like? I, I, I don't get it. Uh, so PCO has gotten nothing but cheers since the moment. So, so it hard to kill whenever they were attacking them. PCO was getting chance whenever an honor no more debuted. They were chanting PCO as he was doing his crazy moves during the match with Saban. They were chanting PCO uh, at no surrender. PCO was getting all the chance because of the crazy stuff he was doing. I think they just turned him baby face. I think at sacrifice, he goes in there. He will lose to Jonah. Honor no more will then turn on him. And he is a complete baby face because they got six members already. That's too many for a faction. Uh, he yeah. didn't really, he didn't really fit in with that crew. He's too crazy. So I, I like PCO baby face doing stuff. So I'm fine with it too. Um, just pull the trigger and let it happen. Do the ward low thing with them and let's just get it done. Yeah. Yeah. Get, get, get it out of the way. Don't let it string on for two years. Like Wardlow. I mean, this, I mean, this brother, when he came out, I was like, Oh, they brought out the only guy older than swinger. Uh, and then he came out and, uh, That's true, got, by the way. yeah, got, got huge pops there. So, uh, Jim Miller interviewed Diana Perazzo about her upcoming champ champ challenge that sacrificed Perazzo ran down the name she had defeated. And then it was interrupted by Giselle Shaw, who said Perazzo had an easy win against frost. Uh, because she took her out. Prazo talked trash to Shaw, but before Shaw could accept the challenge, Lady Frost walked up and told her that she asked management for a match, and it will be Shaw versus Frost at the countdown show for Sacrifice. Haven't we seen that match before? We It was just a couple weeks ago, and uh, Frost lost. And then next week, Frost got a title shot. So, uh, But in, in, so in the defense of impact, I don't agree with it, However, this was like an open challenge, so it didn't matter what your record was. You could just challenge for the title. So, Frost was very comfortable in the interview segment. Like her, yeah. her dialogue wasn't stilted and, and awkward. So, credit to her on that. I'm just not buying Giselle Shaw in this. I mean, like I have yet to watch her work, right? Because yeah. I missed the show that she was on. The gimmick, not a. I don't buy it. Like I just, it's not working. I need to see the match, and perhaps I'll change my mind. But I'm really. Yeah, not into not her, into this Giselle Shaw thing. Right no, now. her her in ring work is far better than her promos. So, um, Hannah Finn and Ray Walt ran down the card for sacrifice, including the newly added matches of OGK versus Rich Swan and Willie Mack, which should be a uh, really good fun match. Um, uh, Mickey James and Tasha Steeles for the knockouts title. Um, so Bullet Club, Jay White, Doc Gallows, Carl Anderson, and Chris Bay defeated Violent by Design, Joe Doring, and Joey. Uh, and Cody Diener and the Gorillas of Destiny. The moment that I saw that it was Diener instead of Eric Young, I was like, I know who's getting the pen. That's <laughs> so, why. That's why old Cody Diener's on the team. <laughs> yeah, and he just resigned, and it's because he will always get the pen, and you need those guys around. You need that so, guy, and he knows, and he knows it. I thought it was really cool how it started off, where you know this is a, a heated feud, so they mm -hmm. didn't just start off, you know, going to the corners immediately and calling for the first two guys to to enter the ring and do their lockups. No, as soon as uh, God came out, they just started brawling all over the building. Uh, security comes out, they start beating up security, and Scott Demore uh, then comes out and and instead of like you know postponing the match or canceling it, he said, "Screw it, it's now no DQ, go at it." And then he told the security guards to get the hell out of the ring. I thought that was a strong open to the match. Yeah, man. It worked. You know, I like, um, I don't know. I'm so 50, 50 on Scott, but he's been on the show less. So I was good. This was a good use. For him, yeah. You know? good, good use for him. And and then I thought the match was uh, pretty good. I thought it was yeah, pretty funny. At, yeah. At one point, uh, Joe Doring grabbed a door and he was going to put Chris Bay through it, but Chris Bay uh, wiggled his way out of the power bomb. And then uh, Doring went to go do a shoulder tackle on to Chris Bay through a door, but he ends up dooring himself. So Doring got doored. Doring did get doored. <laughs> yeah. Very, so. uh, very GCW with these doors. I actually like the Doring uh, uh, Jay White interaction. Yeah. I have it. Ooh, all Japan versus New Japan because I'm a nerd like that. Um, yeah. By the way, Kazuyuki Vegeta is still the global. Honor <laughs> champion. So he hadn't lost it yet, huh? Not yet. Not yet. I, I, uh, it wasn't because of that match, but I did cancel my Russell Universe subscription. I, I had the free for three months and then, uh, um, they kept charging me, and uh, I have just not been watching lately. So the, the first official challenger to Kazuki Fujita's title, Masato Tanaka. Yeah, so they went with somebody that is Johnny Swinger's age, but who is actually still very good. By He's the still way, still very good. <laughs> yeah. It's just a very, uh, it's a very Noah move. Yeah, yeah, F Fujita moving around like Rhino, and uh, he's the champ. So there you go. But um, 
Yeah. So Bullet Club got the victory. Um, Girls of Destiny and um, the Good Brothers, they actually brawl to the back. Um, and uh, Jay White got the pin over Cody Diener, of course. So, and then in the back, as the show is ending, they just, uh, Good Brothers and Girls of Destiny were just brawling all over the, the backside area and uh, the backstage area. And then the Good Brothers just took off out the exit. And uh, we're not going to see the Girls of Destiny for a while because they're in Japan for the New Japan Cup. So, they are in the yeah. never ending New Japan Cup, the 8,000 man brackets for this did you, year's New Japan Cup. Did you fill out a bracket this year? No, I looked at oh. those brackets. When I saw that Okada had a first round match and Master Wado had a bye, my sports brain went, this is not real. And I moved on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love Chris Sams and I, and I wanted, wanted to support him, but I actually didn't fill out my bracket either. So no, I just, um, I can't. And I saw that. I'm like, I'm done. I'm out. No, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I know no reasonable, no reason should Master Wado have a buy over the champion. So I'm, I'm right. checked out. Um, yeah. Are Violet by Design baby faces now? I think they're kind of tweeners, but they do have a legitimate yeah. gripe because they do. You know, they 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 teamed up with the Good Brothers for the last you know month to to fight the More. the the Bullet Club, and next thing you know, they're part of the Bullet Club. And the reason why they were teaming up is because the Good Brothers said shot. you'll get it. So now they're getting a title shot at, at Sacrifice. So logical storytelling and um violent by design teamed up with tama tonga tonga loa and the only reason is because they have a mutual enemy it doesn't matter if they're baby face or heel so okay. i yeah I, I i dug the whole thing and i'm uh I'm, you know i know we've seen the um, violent by design versus the good brothers before but i think that it's a different story and um should should be good to go overall thoughts on the show tonight it's fine um i like the end i like the beginning there's stuff i like there was nothing really bad on the show. I mean, nobody died. Nobody was brought back to life. You know, <laughs> yeah. there was no demons. Yeah. Um, there was no reality show bullshit. So, you know, it was fine. Just watch the ball or TV. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I thought, I thought it was a decent show. Again, I would probably put it on the, the bottom rung of, yeah. uh, of the episodes that we have been getting lately. Uh, it's but, been a good year though. It's yeah. been a good year at impact. The, the bar is high right now. And it I is. think, I think that is a, I think that's a good thing um sacrifice coming up this saturday um got a lot of big matches um let's go ahead and run down the card real quick and just do let's quick do picks um we got the impact world championship moose versus heath um i don't think that's going to be a good match and i think moose is going to win what say you sir this is the most waste of a world title match of all time <laughs> like yeah. it's like george south getting that against rick flair uh yeah, yeah it's gonna moose that's just yeah it pisses me off that chris saban's not on the card but heath is and chris saban has a victory over moose he should be getting the title shot but that would be logical storytelling but no yeah. Heath Heath got kids or something yeah sure. Heath Heath can barely breathe and here here's a world championship match so um impact knockouts world championship uh mickey james versus tasha steals who you got I'm hoping it's Tasha Steeles. Logic says probably Mickey James because I think we're building to this Chelsea Green heel turn, which will feature lots of bad matches. But I think Tasha's done great work, and I would I think I think Mickey as champ is uh, a little played out at this point. I'd like to see a change. I think that WWE bump that she got is over, and I'm ready for Tasha Steeles. So not only do I hope, I I think that she will win. I'm gonna pick her. Um, Impact Tag Team Champions, uh, Good Brothers versus Violent by Design. Good Brothers, we just re, we just kind of revamped the Good Brothers, and this Bullet Club thing is brand new, so it's yeah. Uh, we got to uh, keep the belts on them a little bit longer. Yeah, and stick around on Patreon. We just got a Good Brothers announcement that uh, pretty juicy. Quite so, interesting. Yeah. Quite interesting. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Uh, X, yeah, X Division Championship: Trey Miguel versus Jake Something. We forgot to talk about Something's promo. Oh um, yes, and that was a good promo, by the way. It was a good promo. Yeah. I don't believe he'll win. No, I don't either. But they're doing something with them. This is their semi-annual push of Jake something. Uh, that's true. That's yeah. True. We have so, to dangle the carrot in front of Jake something every year. Yeah, we'll say, hey, hey, are you going to sign this contract? Okay, well, we'll put you in a big match if you just sign. Okay, I'll sign. And then put him in the big match. Okay, now you're back I mean, to the no, bottom of the card. Um, Trey wins because yeah. I think we need to move on. and put. I do think I do think it's time to put that exhibition belt on somebody else. I think it's speedball's time, man. I'm, I'm a speedball guy. Uh, knockouts tag championship, uh, inspiration versus the influence, uh, inspiration easy, the love right? Of God, inspiration and leave this thing alone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> champ, champ challenge, uh, ring of honor women's world champion, uh, Deonna Perrazzo. She's also the Reina Duranis champion. So, uh, versus to be determined. Any guesses on who TBD will be? 
because i and, i was and, way and, fucking off on uh, the last show man uh i think that with her being the ring of honor women's <laughs> champion it could be anything at this yeah, point no. i have could, no idea i know that could be in flux man tony khan might want that belt he kind of owns it now he so. might he might not like nobody knows what's going on this part, I, honestly i love that nobody knows what's going on it makes things yeah. interesting but um i don't know i don't I, know I, just because of that i have to say uh diana but i legitimately don't know what's gonna happen well i don't know who's challenging her so you gotta right. do you have a, a guess like or somebody you would like to see yes thunder rosa that's what that, i would like to see yeah well we did that at slam anniversary last did, year that was but she's got a world title shot coming up so if she walks yeah. in there with the ring of honor world championship mm-hmm. That would make that match more interesting. Yeah, that would. I, I'm going happen, to. But that's what I want to see. I predicted Athena at No Surrender, and I was wrong. I Athena. I'm going to make that prediction again, Athena. Um, I just, I she hasn't appeared on uh, AEW yet. They they have a lot going on, um, and so I think that she could work some shots here for Impact while she waits to get signed. So. Here's a here's a catch first. So what if Athena comes in, wins the Ring of Honor title, and brings it to the new Ring of Honor? I honestly, I, I, I could see that happening too. I, but I don't know what the new ring of honor is going to be. No so does. yeah, no kind of cool. It's kind of yeah. cool actually. Eddie Edwards versus Ryan Um, uh, Yeah. Eddie Edwards. Yeah. I hope it's kept short because Ryan was hurting, man. He couldn't even run down to the ring tonight. No. Um, no. Jay white versus Alex Shelley. God, this is going to be good. Oh it's my gosh. Jay, it's going to be Jay White. Bring in Alex Shelley and make sense. We've done zero to set it up on television. Yeah. But um, it's going to be Jay White. It should be a good match. Yeah. Uh, it should should be match of the night. I don't think yeah. anything's going to come close. Um, it's on, not that great of a card. So, yeah. <laughs> no. Well, you know, I, I do think that uh, it there are some very intriguing matches, I will say, with uh, Miguel versus something, from White versus rates, Shelley. From a yeah. work rate standpoint, this holds way above everything else. Yeah. Um, and, and this one, I am very interested in Jonah versus PCO. That's going to be a train wreck of awesome. <laughs> chaos. And when I say a train wreck, I mean, I'm not calling it's going to be like one of those bad things, but you have to understand every P if you've never watched, okay. If you're an impact fans, some of you guys might never had a chance to watch PCO. So, um, it's it, don't expect like Dave Meltzer to go crazy for it. That's what I'm going to tell you. It's going to be ridiculous. You're going to say, how is this old man not dead? And I have no answers for you because that's the gimmick, right? Yeah. Because he's Frankenstein. So it's going to be awful, awful, but just amazing. And Jonah gets the win. Yeah, I think Jonah's going to win. I think PCO goes full baby face. Uh, Honor No More turns on him. That's my prediction. I think that's the best way to go if that happens, actually. Yeah. Pre-show match, Rich Swan and Willie Mack versus OGK. I'm looking forward to that one, too, man. I think it's going to be a really good match. Yeah. I and I think OGK de- definitely wins. And then we got Giselle Shaw versus Lady Frost. Giselle Shaw, I guess. Yep, same, 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 same. Looks like it's going to be an interesting show. Hey, uh, if you're listening to us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts, uh, thanks for listening, and we'll be back next week. Or if you want to sign up for Patreon, go to Fight Game Media, uh, to our Fight Game Media Patreon, go to patreon.com slash fight game media. We're getting ready to talk some news, some Ring of Honor news. Uh, some go, uh, Cody's got some stuff going on. There's a big match announced for WrestleCon. So lots of stuff uh, going down. We're going to talk, break all that up down in uh, Patreon. And uh, Impact Lounge list, well, viewers, sorry, I almost said listeners, Impact Lounge viewers. Uh, thanks for tuning in again this week. Uh, we should be back uh, at some point. Uh, we do appreciate our buddy BQ for letting us hang out here on thanks, the BQ. lounge. Uh, and giving us the spotlight, man. We really appreciate it. So 